What's uh, up? Hey. Uh, good ev- ev- evening, world. It's back for episode eight. Oh, yeah. How, how you guys doing today? You know, it's just another Saturday. It's going pretty well. <laughs> yeah. All right. It was beautiful last uh, It's allergy season. Oh, uh, yeah. You getting sniffly, Ben? Yeah. Lots Uh-oh. of pollen in the air. Lots of bees doing their business. You know what yeah, I mean? that's good. <laughs> With the flowers. Yeah, I like honey. <laughs> I spent some time in the UVA gardens today. Walked around. It was I know. Beautiful like outside. I didn't see any bees though. Uh, right on. I saw, some, I saw a bunny and I saw some birds. Yeah, the, the bees are doing their business. They don't want you to see that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. All right, guys. So, uh, what are we? What are we doing today? <laughs> what, is, what are we doing? A variety of things. Well, right now we're hanging out, Lewis. So, uh, that, what, hap- what happens after hanging out? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. We got a lot of we got a lot of fun things in store for today. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we've got videos and we've got some uh, some special guests with us today. We've got we got some musician friends uh, tuning in t- with us tonight, and we've got some music industry people that we're gonna kind of pick their brains and see how everyone's doing. Heck yeah! But first, we have a recording uh, of us playing a song by John. Prime, the late great John Prime. Um, we did this song, Spanish Pipe Dream, on well, I think it was our second um, live from the Looking Glass show, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and show that to you. Yeah, we're back. Hello. Thanks. All right, we're having some technical difficulties here, and uh, we're gonna try and work them out just as soon as we can here. We're just trying to run a run a talk show from uh, seven seven different locations right now. Soon to be more, <laughs> yeah. Soon to be more. <laughs> you can never have too many locations. That's what they say. Not bad. So. uh it's all good. Have you guys been listening to uh, any good music this week? Jake, how about you? A uh, group called Osnoy, I think is what it's called. Um, I think I talked about it in the group chat once. Uh, just like some dirty funk. Very, I think it sounds very scopey, but when I was listening to it with Brian the other day, he disagreed with me, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He probably knows better than I do, so. No, Osnoy, it was awesome. We, we were jamming out. So. Some cool meter changes and whatnot, so I've been in that vibe recently. Very right, cool. I've been I've been playing Krongbin song on on repeat. Oh yeah, I heard that for the first time yesterday, and it I, I was really impressed by it. I liked it. Good tone, really good tone. Quite groovy. Uh, I found a good album. Uh, I can't remember the the name of it. It's by uh, Alphonse Muzon, um, and it's this awesome like jazz funk or jazz fusion uh, kind of album, and. Uh, I think I said I sent you guys one of the songs from it. Lewis pointed out that the drum the drum track sounds a lot like Alfonso must be under. Dude, I <laughs> I think it's bass. I think it because the riff is the same. It's just not in seven. But the Alfonso is spelled really differently. I don't know. That's on that's on the Fiona Apple album. No, no, no. what? <laughs> it's on um Funky Snake or I think it's called Funky, Funky Snake. That is the name of the song by. No, Al- but that Fiona Apple record is very good. I like that yeah, a lot. There's a, there's a song that's basically Alfonso Muscadunder, but in seven, and I thought that was exactly what you were talking about. No, no. Alfonso Muscadunder is the seven. I did look, I couldn't figure out why Todd Terry named the song that, but I think his son is named Alf. And uh, a Muscadunder is a blunderbuss in oh. uh, Norwegian or Dan. Or, uh, what, what, what language does, does he speak? No, uh, no way. Yeah, yeah. Norwegian, that was right. Um, yeah. All right, checking the chat out here. In the <laughs> woo, <laughs> we're in and out of the desktop. <laughs> in the last like uh, twenty four hours, because I was taking a bunch of graduation pictures today, 
I was listening to Reeling in the Years by Steely Dan <laughs> on kind of like repeat. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the most cliche thing you could do. <laughs> I know, dude, yeah. But I was hit with the nostalgia pretty hard and I was like, <sighs> you know, I let it out one of the sides. You, you just have to have that Green Day time you know, good riddance, time of your I life. Oh yeah, yeah. Play those two songs back and forth. Oh, something's happening on, on the stream, I think. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, I don't know. It just zoomed in and out and in and out. It's really cool. Infinity? Effects. Yeah! Oh, man. Not bad. There's a, uh, there's a band that I've been listening to this week called Parcels. They put out a, like, a live in-studio session that's quite good. It's like extremely tight, groovy, funky pop kind of sound They're good it's worth worth the check hey when was the first time we played this John Bryan song that's coming up when did we start doing that Camel no, like yeah, six months Camel. ago Camel was the first one yeah Camel was the first one yeah yeah I mean we could just do a rendition of it now out of time I don't know if it would do the man <laughs> justice Hey, 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 what's up? Uh, boom. Hey, Darren, what's going on with that? Uh, I'm... Cool. What's everybody drinking right now? What you guys got? I'm drinking a uh, whiskey on the rocks. On, okay, okay. With a little maraschino uh, cherry added. I like it's that. It's basically the poor man's Manhattan. <laughs> Just as good, yeah. I have a tall glass of water. That's oh. healthy. Wow, I wouldn't have guessed with that. Ice. <laughs> with ice. I got the, uh, the peak, organ yeah. peak organic fresh cut mm -hmm. pills. Right now. Not All right. pushing it too much, man. We're pushing way too much. I'm drinking fresh tea. Tea. some tea, tea, some lemon ginger tea. Mm. Yeah. I got myself a classic uh, Budweiser Select. I think we're really happy with our hard drive that disconnected. And that's the song King of the Ears, so I feel like it's got to be pretty good, right? I haven't had one before. So. Read, read the thing. That, read the that's thing. what everything is. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. This is the famous Budweiser beer. I got it back. We know I got it no back. I got it back. Okay, I just need to get OBS back. I just need to get OBS back. That's the problem. So much to brew and age. Our exclusive <laughs> Beechwood aging man. process. Come on. Oh, produces a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you will find in no working. other beer. And get this, at any price. Amen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Poetic. <laughs> Say that every night before you go to sleep. Yeah, it's a, you know. I think my dad memorized that in college. He can Is that still... true? Eric, are you out there? Can you hear us? He can still recite it. That's pretty impressive. I've, I've heard it. Yeah, no, he... I have too. Brian and I can both do pie. I, yeah, I think there's more than I do. Maybe back he did it. Three point one four one five. Yeah, was, was that? Seven nine three two six. That was yeah. terrible. Yeah. I can't hear anything. You can see it. It's just not on the screen. Where I click it, it's just like it's not. It's, it's not showing me. Um, didn't you guys start singing that at the Richmond show? At the uh, my computer's not. Was that the show that we did that? You guys like started yelling the numbers. At um, the Shamrock Show, wasn't that that? What was it in the Uh So we, we have uh, we have a comment in the uh, chat. Someone keeps speaking over us. <laughs> um, I think one of the one of the tech teams' mics is not muted, so that might be why you're not muted. No, it's because uh, we're both saying hi at the same time. Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not what. That's not what. What's what's y'all's favorite kind of pies? Like not the number, you know. Like, you know, apple pie. I'm not really a pie kind of guy, Brian. Pie. I'm not a pie kind of guy. I don't really, you know, I don't really like it. I mean, what am I supposed to say? I mean, you know, it's a little bit too uh, liquidy for my taste. Too delicious. Like more of a solid cake, you know. That's what mm. I want. Yeah. What about a key lime pie? I do I do like pie. No, no, no. But what about key lime? Because it's less, less liquidy. I mean, I, I, that's why I, I like it. I like it a lot. Pumpkin pie is much cheaper. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Fuck this, man. I mean, Ooh. pumpkin pie with copious quantities of the show's just not gonna whipped cream will we'll probably, you know, hit the I spot. I guess uh, I, think, I think Sam is the Sam is the unmuted mic. 
<laughs> yeah. Sorry for technical difficulties here. We're, we're just hanging out. Um, you know, we have a good question here in the chat that I see from Scott Cosen, who says, uh, "How's the creative process during this time?" Um, kind of like it's pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> we're just ad libbing, you know. Yeah, and we got some. We got some uh, some content in the works of us playing some playing some songs at our houses and whatnot. Um, so be on the lookout for that stuff. We're, we're staying Ten chips. We're staying fresh. Yeah, I mean it's difficult because we can't we can't really play together. So I think we've all kind of individually been been working on our work on, working on our own stuff. Um, I've been practicing, you know, writing, doing doing a little bit of writing, and so. You know, there's definitely plenty of time to, to create. And so that's an essential part of the creative process is having the time. I would say it's, it's maybe a little bit too much time. Like Sometimes it feels yeah. intimidating. It feels intimidating to have so much open time. Mm. Yeah, I agree, definitely. Like, it, it's, it's I'm, I'm opening up a little bit more. At first, it's like, oh, you know, I kind of, you know, I want to write music. I want to work on stuff. And then if you're not, like, right, really inspired, because, I mean... The whole situation has been somewhat depressing, right? Not that somewhat depressing isn't very inspiring sometimes, but uh, you know, I, I think I'm finally starting to open up because it's gotten to the, you know, you know, we're getting a lot of work done. And there's a lot of stuff that has to happen behind the scenes, but you know, aside from that, a lot of watching TV. Like I've been marathonic rewatching Game of Thrones. Hey, so the only thing is, I, I can't control. We're, I'm in the seventh season, the only thing I can do and we started like ten days ago. What's on my laptop? You know? Know? Holy well, shit! Yeah, like a season a day. No, it's like maybe five hours every night. You know, it's like around eight or nine o'clock. You know, flip on OBS and OBS is not letting you. And away you go, and away you go. Yeah, and away you go. I've been watching Community and Barry. It's been a solid, solid use of time. Barry is so good. Barry was my pay attention to it show. Community is my put it on and practice on my, my practice community? pad show. <laughs> yeah. Well, so should we just go on with the interviews? Do we need the Dude, videos? Sam, videos? Sam is talking really loudly over everybody. Sam, can you hear us at all? I'm not sure. I, I don't think he can. Okay. Because he's not. He's not in. He is not in this Zoom call. He's he's on another stream, I guess. Maybe that's part of what the issue is with the video playing. But, you know, this is so this is episode eight of Containment Entertainment. We've done them all live. Uh, <laughs> Sam and Carter have been fantastic. This is the first actual, like, technical dip. Like, we've had some things with, you know, people talking, getting cut off by a video feed or something, very small issues. But um, mostly it's been incredibly smooth. And so this is the... Uh, I'm pretty impressed that, you know, we got eight episodes into this kind of like TV show thing we're doing here uh, during the quarantine uh, without there being any, you know, significant issue at all. But uh, sure. <laughs> we're not hearing you with our rambles. I hear you. If anyone has, like, interesting questions or anything for us, in the chat on the YouTube. All right, all right. There's a possibility that this is the most entertaining thing that we can do, you know? <laughs> it's possible. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody Shame. wants a Stanley the Oyster story, too. Oh, Stanley the Oyster story? Yeah, yeah. that could be good. Okay, so... Um... When I was in a high Mute school, <laughs> Mute yourself. Okay. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, when I was in high school, I was very stoned, and I was laying on the couch, and I was at a house party, and my friend popped his head up over the couch and said, "You're so high, I'm an oyster," and so that is uh, where the song came from. <laughs> did he say it with that tune? Or did he yeah, just he say went, it? He went, you're so high, I'm an oyster. He literally sang that to you. Yeah. That is crazy. You don't know that story? I thought he just told you that. I didn't know he actually sang it. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. What's that guy's name? Who uh, was that? His name is Carson. He got a writing credit. <laughs> yeah. 
Carson's awesome. Yeah. Hey, uh, I just got word from Sam that we're going to be joined by our good friend Aaron Lunsford now. <laughs> really? Hey, great. Hey! <laughs> great news. Sorry, John Prime. It's Aaron Lunsford time. <laughs> Calling an audible. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll post the John Prine video. <laughs> so that it can be seen. All right, so we'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Aaron Lunsford. Woo! Woo! Yay! What's up, man? Hi, how's it going? It's good to see you. You too. How is everybody? Hanging in there. I didn't think I'd be talking to all of you. This is so cool. Yep, yeah. we're all here. Yeah, pretty <laughs> unconventional. Ooh, I like that Natalie Crash shirt. That's what's Thank up. you. I was going to say the yellowness is really nice. I like it. You can see it on my hands. Wow. Do you recognize it from, uh, it's from the Aaron and the Wildfire photo shoot. We just held on to it. And... Is this the popsicle photo shoot? Yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Sweet. A very a wonderful photo shoot. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so Aaron, how have you been hanging in there through uh, all this madness? I'm doing okay. Um, I have a margarita right now. Woohoo! Um, yeah. right now the salt, the here. salt's on the rim is <laughs> That's like right. the nice touch, man. Always. Yeah. Um, I'm doing all right. I've been uh, trying to do a weekly live stream, kind of like you guys, and Great. trying to adapt to the new normal, what the new concert setting is like. Um, and I've been going on a lot of walks, trying to get a lot of sunshine. How about you guys? Little of the same, I think. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, it, the, luckily the weather's been really nice, so that's been kind of lifting my spirits up at least a little bit. Um, we've gotten some rain, but even then it's kind of been nice throughout that, the rain too. Um, so that's good to like clear your head and stuff when, you know, I, I miss going out to places, but, Remember you know, places? To the group place. Yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, when's your weekly, uh, live stream? Uh, when do you do that? I'm trying to do uh, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I'm calling it uh, Aaron's Stay Home Dang It show. And um, each week is, like, themed differently. But, yeah, I think I've done, like, 10 of them now. I've done a lot of them. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks. It's it's wild that we're all learning how to be open camera. I know. Yeah. And have you guys ever used OBS? It's what I have now. It's what this is going through, yeah. So I never thought, I never dreamed that I would be the person behind the wheel there. Like, it's just such a learning curve. But I've been figuring that out, too. But it's good. It's giving us yeah, a couple day, but... <laughs> I was using OBS for a couple of our first streams, and it's a little bit difficult to figure it out, but, you know, a couple of YouTube tutorials. And, yes. And then it becomes kind of fun, actually. Yeah, I thought. I would say bought stock in their company last year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, congrats on a new album. Yeah. Ooh, super exciting. We uh, we were lucky to hear, like, a couple 30-second clips when we worked with Stuart Myers, like, I don't know, God, like, a year ago or something. He was, yeah. He's got an awesome project that I played a little bass on in or, or something, and mm -hmm. I, I couldn't wait to hear it, and just super glad that it's out in the world now, and I've, I've been enjoying listening to it. I've been listening to Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah, Stuart Myers is the best. He produced with me and uh, mixed everything and engineered everything. Uh, he's so great. He's I a wizard with the computer. I have one of them to show you guys. This is, for those who haven't seen it, this is my album. Also really cool colors. Really cool colors. Thank you. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I'm stoked to have it out there. It's called The Damsel. Um, ironically, because you guys know me, I don't think of myself as a helpless damsel you know so it's a kind of reclaiming of the word um and i've got all of aaron and the wildfire played something on it so i've got all of my favorite people on there um and all the songs are really personal and very vulnerable it's like a little bit different taste different flavor than aaron and the wildfire it's more singer songwriter more folk more bluegrass kind of more towards my roots i play banjo on the record so it's awesome. a little different <laughs> Yeah, I love the the folk influence. I think the um, the writing and the performance was so great, and I think the production had such a good respect for the song. Um, I really love the tune "Neighbor's Eyes" or "Neighbor's Eye." Yeah, "Neighbor's Eyes." Yeah. Um, and I was wondering, 
tell us a little bit about that. Sure, yeah. Um, Neighbor's Eye is also one of my favorites. I thought it was kind of one of the more subdued songs on the album, but I still put it second because it has one of the most powerful messages. Yeah. Um, I wrote it after attending the Women's March in D.C., the International Women's March. It was in D.C. on uh, January 2017. I think that's mm-hmm. right. And I went with a Charlotte's, another Charlottesville musician, Sally Rose. You guys probably know her, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but going into that day, I was so scared about what the day was going to look like and nervous about violence and us just being safe in, in D.C. Um, but then it ended up being so beautiful, and it was such an amazing experience. We felt so united and uplifted and so I wrote that song reflecting on the women's march um, about loving your neighbor basically very cool dig it yeah, it's very cool to you know we're, we're lucky that we're able to do things in a you know peaceful and wonderful gathering manner you know I'm looking forward to being able to gather again but um, yeah but good memories looking back mm-hmm. absolutely what was the song you guys played with uh, with her at the Jefferson? Which one was that? That was uh, Whatever You Like, which That's is right, the yeah. one that I have prepared for you guys also. Oh, um, yeah, you guys played Shaker and Clave? Clave. Yeah. <laughs> that was so clutch. I was like, it has a Clave rhythm. You were like, oh, I actually have a Clave. <laughs> it was so awesome. It's a Ron Burgundy moment with the jazz. Yeah. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis came in clutch with that. Prepared with the clave. <laughs> hey, guys, this is your uh, your tech team here. Um, so we are able to kick it to your video. Uh, we will not be able to mute anyone's audio, but if we, whenever you want, we can go uh, send the video you shared us with us yesterday, Aaron. Sure. Sweet. Awesome, Great. let's do it. So we'll just manually mute our, mute our channels here? Yes, please. Mute all the channels. Mute all the channels. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, I'm Erin Lunsford. I'm going to play you a tune that I wrote. It's called Whatever You Like, and it's from my latest album, The Damsel. Rosy and ablaze, my thoughts would run. Trust someone You let a shade Fall down around us Not sure If you're lost or found What do you want from this love?
awesome. Thank you. Yeah, You're that welcome. was fun playing that with you guys back in, when was that, January? February. February. Yeah. Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. And, uh, yeah, that was very fun. Um, um, go ahead. I was going to ask about this art collaboration project that you have going on with the damsel. Amazing. That's what I was going to tell you guys about. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Um, I have one of the prints here to show you guys, but yeah, so I was talking to, um, you know, Christina Swanson, she's dating my drummer, Nick. Mm -hmm. um, she's the one yeah. that took the popsicle pictures. She took, um, she took this picture. She's a wonderfully talented. creative friend. Yeah. She's a super creative friend. She's amazing. <laughs> Um, but I was brainstorming with her, trying to think of a way to incorporate the or help out the visual arts community. And I was talking about hiring people to do artwork for my weekly live stream or, some, I don't know, something like that, where I was, you know, getting a visual artist involved, too, because I want to kind of keep the chain moving, um, keep the circle turning. I feel like there's a way better analogy. <laughs> uh, I'll leave it there. But she was like, why don't you do a, a visual album with you know, with your album release. Um, and so then we got some artists, some Richmond artists involved. Um, Jessica Camilli is our other partner. She's also known as Rapid Eyes. And this was the print um, that she came up with. And I have t-shirts of this on my website and stuff. But this is like the first piece of the visual album. Um, but we're selling prints of every single piece. So there'll be 13 pieces, one for each track on my album. Wow. Oh, um, that's there's 13 artists. Um, and uh, basically, the, all the proceeds from the prints are going to the artists. And if the artists want to, they can donate a portion of proceeds to Culture Works Richmond, which is this organization that has an artist relief fund right now. Uh, and they're doing amazing things otherwise, too. They're just they're having like soup kitchens for artists and doing all kinds of amazing things. So we have a community partner, and then we're helping out artists, ideally, when people buy the prints. So they'll all be on my website, erinlunsford.com. Um, this one is one of my favorites, but you can get it on a shirt if you like it. <laughs> That's sweet. I love that. And I love Jessica's work too. She's Me too. She's so talented. She's rapid dot eyes on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, Jessica Camille. But yeah, so we released four so far. Yeah. This one, which is like the album one and then three songs worth. So, and then eventually there'll be a, a visual or a virtual exhibit where you can pay admission and look at all of the pieces as an album. Very cool. Are those coming out each week? Yeah, every Wednesday and Friday. Awesome. Through June, I think. I think there's that many weeks worth. <laughs> we'll be on you, the lookout for the rest of them. Have you done a visual uh, exhibit like this before? Or what Like, what led you to choose it? It's, it's a unique idea. I, I wouldn't have thought to do it. It's pretty cool. I wouldn't have either. I was Really, Christina is the one that helped me think of it. I was just trying to think of a way to hire artists. Um, but she was saying... You know, I, if I'm doing a weekly live stream, I probably couldn't afford to pay an artist every week to keep, like upkeep that all the time. Um, so she was like, why don't we do something more spread out and let the public pay for it? Like try to fund them and have people buy prints. So got to give that credit to Christina Swanson. Sweet. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Right on. Does anybody else have any questions for Aaron? Or do you have any questions for us, Aaron? Um, I, I guess... Uh, Man, I want to know how all of you are doing and, like, touch base with all of you, but I don't want to <laughs> take up too much time. <laughs> Who thought of this containment entertainment? It's such a good name. Brian. That's Brian's name, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we we thought, like, the, I, I don't know, the quarantine thing was just kind of overdone, you know, a day into quarantine. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I sat down with my girlfriend, Allie, who I think is watching, and... Uh, I was like, what are we going to do tonight for our containment entertainment? And I was like, wait, that's a great, you know, that's, that's yeah. different. You know, I was being silly and stupid, <laughs> but, but the name kind of stuck in, in it. Um, I think it, I think it works pretty well. Uh, especially, you know, it's kind of vague because every, every episode is a little bit different. You know, we've done everything from live shows to having wonderful guests on the program. That's so, awesome. I really keeping it fresh and bringing in people too. You're like keeping it fresh and, supporting the community around you. It's amazing. So thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. And everybody, make sure you check out The Damsel. It's a great record. Thank you. Aaron Lunsford, everyone. <laughs> yeah! Woohoo! Awesome. Bye, Thanks, Aaron. Bye. Bye. I'll see you Bye. soon. Miss you. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Cool. All right. Well, wonderful. Well, uh, we've. Uh, I think our next guest is is right on deck too. Cool. Cool. Jake, you wanna you wanna take this one away? Yeah. I don't. Paul, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, everybody, I'd like to introduce Paul Bruins from the Vagabonds, holding it down on the bass. Great friend of ours and mine. You know. Yeah. What's Play up? a lot of shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Here we go. Just tuning in live from the Vagabonds house. So. Yeah. Nashville, Tennessee, baby. Yeah, man. Just laying right here in Nashville. Uh, just uh, at the house, it's just me and Rich right now. So we cool. just been, I've been listening to Richard play banjo for about a month. <laughs> Steal nonstop. And I'm getting all I have a concert every day with him. Nice. Is he just starting to learn banjo during this time? As far as I know, yeah, but he's been playing pedal steel. He plays pedal steel on all our records and everything. Mm -hmm. so he's uh, he's just stepping it up to a new level. So. And uh, doing a couple live streams here and there. Kind of fun. Yeah, I saw you guys' live stream last week. Yeah, actually, that was the first time I have ever played an acoustic show with our with our band in, in a whole decade. Really? The yeah. first time? I've never done that. Um, I saw it, and I was surprised. Yeah, it was I was like, yeah, hey. I was surprised too. I was like, oh, it really just happened. And I was like, I got invited to the acoustic hang. That was kind of cool. So. Hell yeah. That's sweet. And bass players aren't really wanted for the acoustic shows. So, <laughs> Brian, how do you feel about that comment? <laughs> it's sad, but, you know, as a fellow bass player, I get it. I mean, I have acoustic bass. I can play upright. It's the same kind of deal. But, it, but for acoustic stuff, it just doesn't come through in the same way. For a lot of songs. Lot of yeah. Songs. Well, what, what I had to do is I had to, I put the 15-inch the uh, speaker I have down here, and I just kind of plugged it into it a little bit to get a little bit of sound. And it definitely yeah. sounded, it definitely actually filled up the room a little bit. But I got these Elixir strings, those bass strings for acoustics, and we had a sponsorship for a while. And they, they put them on. I got it all set up and fixed, like, right when all this stuff started. So I've literally nice. got my bass ready to go. I'm a fan of acoustic bass, man. They're so cool. They definitely are. Oh, what yeah. kind of weapon do you have? It's a Fender. Bought a few hundred bucks at a store somewhere while we we're in the middle of the studio just to work on something to have it for the future. And then I got these new strings on it. And now I, pl I play it all the time. You know, it's how I write everything on it, too. So you can play an acoustic bass. You can play electric. It's way harder. So. Oh, yeah, I know the te string tension and everything. I I'm hoping I – I might try out those Elixir strings that, that you're talking about. Cause the they're, ones actually, that I they're actually like. super expensive and uh, because they're really high rated, and I didn't know anything about them. And then we got them, and I was like, oh, man, this is send them out to musicians. They're trying to get everybody into them. They're legit. Though. Nice. But no nobody plays acoustic bass. It's not like a thing. I mean, yeah. Like, I, didn't, I didn't know Elixir made, made acoustic bass strings at all. Yeah, I mean – but it, apparently they have some of the best acoustic bass strings, and I, I, I don't, I love it. I'm pretty sure the uh, the bass player in Blind Melon played an acoustic bass. Really? Huh. Yeah. Well, I think I just remember that from the music video. Or maybe I'm just making that up. I don't know. That's the I first thing that pops in my head. I'll allow it. I like it. Sounds good to I me. I think there was an acoustic bass renaissance in the like late grunge, like early to mid '90s. Yeah. Where like yeah. the FTV Unplugged would always have people playing acoustic basses and mm -hmm. that's it, the Unplugged. The Relic of, of Nirvana was on there once and, and, and with an acoustic bass and things. And then you never saw him at post grunge and on, you know, it was all yeah. You guys gonna do a Kindle Street unplugged, like M T V style in the nineties? Straight yeah, up. We straight. might, we might, yeah. yeah. We might have it. Yeah. We need cool. a lot of blue lights and a fog machine. <laughs> we can probably so find those, Brian. <laughs> I, we have blue lights in the fog machine, so <laughs> all in there we go. Yeah, yeah. We practiced all acoustic in what in Colorado, and, and I thought it sounded really cool. Sure. Good, good, good vibe for us to to dig into a little bit more. When was oh, I think Colorado. We were there like right after y'all were there. That's what I was going to say. Well, back in February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. End of February. Oh, yeah, because, like, we went to Colorado, and then we went to Charlottesville and played the Jefferson Theater right after. Yeah, we were right. Yeah, yeah we were following each other. You guys yeah. played yeah. Jefferson, like, the week before, while we were in Colorado. Yeah. Right after you yeah. guys were there, I was uh, I was texting Brian, asking him any tips for uh, getting the band van up, up in Steamboat Springs. <laughs> oh, dude, us leaving Steamboat Springs, uh, 
we usually drive after every Saturday night show, just head home, no matter where mm-hmm. in the world. And even from Colorado. Yeah, but this time we couldn't do it because it was so snowy and it was so much ice on the road. We had to stay the night in Steamboat, and they were getting like another two feet of snow dump on that Sunday morning. Oh my god! Um, like seven a.m. and I had oh. to like I had to like dig ice out of the tires. It's like <laughs> the um, you know that the band house up there on the hill. It was. Mm-hmm completely snowed over like the porch and everything you couldn't even go to the porch or open the doors and oh my God. the porch it was completely filled with snow and yeah it, it was it was insane we had to drive out of there with all that snow dumping down on us constantly <laughs> at one point we had to pull over because the windshield wipers froze and they put they wouldn't clean so i had to go off and start pouring water on them and just like get the ice off it and everything and melt the oh ice. my gosh oh it, was my free- God. Yeah, it was freezing as we were driving and it took us six hours to get from Steamboat Springs to the airport to drop. <laughs> what? Yeah. Denver? Denver Airport? Yeah. It took us six hours. Six hours? Oh, my God. That's how slow we had to go. That's yeah. We were going like 35 miles an hour the whole way. That, that's definitely the most dangerous trek we've ever had. Oh, yeah. We, we had a little ice going going up to there and, and definitely. Yeah, back wheels <laughs> pitched down just a little bit, but yeah, we, we caught it and it was all good. We were yeah. very very lucky as far as uh, the actual snow. Like we didn't really get any snow, did we? Mm-hmm. No, it was, it not was really. Dry while we were there. Yeah, I think from that storm that you're talking about a week earlier, I think there were a few, like there were a few feet of snow on the ground. But they had cleaned out. They cleared out all the road. They, you know, they have good plows in that part of the country. Yeah. Oh, we had one pull out in front of us as we're going. Like, Brian was getting so nervous for a while. To drink. And all of a sudden, here comes a snowplow, pulls off a of side county road, and pulls in and starts plowing the road right in front of us for the next, like, 10 miles. <laughs> it, was, it was picture perfect, man. It's, it's slow, but safe. Drive a plan of snowplow is not bad. Winter, the snow is too much. But Steamboat, that's, that's my favorite place, man. They gave yeah, me- That's a beautiful spot. Yeah, that was our first time there. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, that's your first time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Schmiggity's, right? You guys played Schmiggity's? Yeah, Schmigg. It was us and Mike and the Moon Pies, which is like an amazing Texas country band. Um, nice. Yeah, they, they, they hauled ass out of there that night and drove all the way to Carson City, like Nevada, through yeah. the night through that stuff. And I was like, yeah, y'all, what? No, we're crashing here. <laughs> I was like, we'll see y'all next time. That's nuts. What's you drinking on there, right? Oh, I got myself a fresh cut pills near here. I oh, am. Yeah. Oh, tasty! God, it's Miller Lite right here. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other fresh cut pills. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm getting into that simpler times at Trader Joe's lager. Um, yeah. That, that Cheap for the buck, like four dollars for six pack, twelve, like eight dollars <laughs> for a twelve pack. You can't beat it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Shout like, out to TJ's. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. Uh, I didn't get to see you guys a couple weeks ago. We were all supposed to play together in Athens. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it would have been our first time in the inside of the, the really? theater. Also, we've done the rooftop, but it would have been the first time. Oh man, inside. inside. Yeah, we were really excited for that show. This is a bummer. Yeah. Well, I, I was really looking forward to it because I mean, I, I feel like that was going to be a big night, man. Uh, we didn't even get. <laughs> We didn't get to the point where you start doing that last minute promo, that month out stuff. And like, it was already like, yeah. It was, yeah. It was a sad, yeah. Sad day. Was, sad day. Yeah. We were doing a, a live record there that night. I don't know if y'all knew that. We um, did. Yeah. Yeah. I know Jake knew it. But uh, yeah, I was like, Jake, you got to be on the record. Yeah. I spilled the beans to them, Paul. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, I figured it. I figured it. <laughs> when we get back, when we get back from all this, you know, and, well, I, I think play we together did, once more. We still need to do that show at Georgia Theater at some point. That'll happen. That'll definitely That'll happen. happen. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Oh. Yeah. That, that's be great. Happen. It'll yeah. be great. Hey, well, uh, I think that we have a uh, – we've got a clip from when we did our December winter tour last Like the first tour we ever did together, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, we've got a clip Oh, no, of, second. Uh, one in 2017 or 20... – 18, I think we played together for the first time in 2017. Yeah, yeah. So it's the we, other we winter tour. tour. Yeah. We did a show at the Camel. Yeah, because we did it two years in a row. We played together at the Camel the first year. Yeah. The, that's got to be at the Broadberry next year. And then it's, you know, up again. We played with y'all in Richmond at least twice now. Same. Yeah. So I guess 
this this would be not our first tour here. Yeah. <laughs> it was the yeah, first, was first like, like bunch of days like, in a row, but yeah. we did like six dates together that that run. That was yeah. A, yeah. One time. What clip we got here? We got we got everything I need with uh, with Jake sitting in at Union Stage in DC. Oh, Union Stage. Oh, December yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I, can't I haven't seen this I video seen in this. a while. I've this never is gonna be this. fun. I don't think I have seen it since I played it. I only saw a lot. All right. Well, let's uh, let's do it. Cliff and see what's up. We're gonna call our buddy Jim. Out. He's gonna do some saxophone work for you here. He plays in Kendall Street Company. You guys ready for Kendall Street Company? <laughs> this was called Everything I Need. Thank you. 
son of Alabama, Tennessee. I saw a movie star smoking a cigarette in an alleyway, talking to a silhouette. One more time. <laughs> Give it up for Jake. Yeah. Woo. Play that jazz right there. And the Mega Bombs. Dude, that's stuff. Every time Jake sit in with us, it's the highlight of the show to me. I just, I love having him around. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Uh, some well, audio difficulties going on there. I apologize to everybody. We'll try to get that. Uh, we'll try to get that video posted uh, or something in the next week. Just so yeah, we'll it. get the we'll get the real we'll get the real video out. Oh yeah, send it to me. I'll definitely put it on our YouTube page. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. No, but yeah, I, I'm so glad I got you to play Saxon Georgia Fire back in uh, December. Yeah, that that was so much fun, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I listened to that all the way to the gig and was just like singing along little hard parts I didn't want to try. And it, it sounded great, I think. Yeah, it, that it, was it, still it, my it, favorite it, show with you guys. That uh, December show. Yeah, that, that night at the Broadberry was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was such an awesome feeling. The room was just like, <laughs> it was good vibes, good vibes, yeah. Yeah, dude, it was a great night of music. Um yeah, man, definitely, definitely can't wait to have you on stage with us again, though, for sure. Yeah, yeah, so you got the live album, you got any other projects coming through uh, coronavirus time, Paul? We actually are putting out a single uh, sometime at the end of the May or early June. Sweet. So, um, awesome. Awesome. We, have a, we have some songs we already started recording, and I guess with this time now, we're using pop music and start working towards the new record and, you know, and uh, really excited. I definitely think there needs to be saxophone and some other cool stuff on there. So you know. I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I would love to. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, whenever whenever we put that out, y'all can have me back on. I'll show you that you guys that new track and everything. And um, uh, it's definitely I'm, I'm definitely excited for it. It's a really awesome song. It's definitely one of my favorite we put out in a long time. So. Does it have a title? Can I ask what the title uh, of the song is? The title is called Burnout. Burnout. Yeah. It's yeah. about you. Is it like biograph? I'm just <laughs> Oh my I mean, god! Yeah, technically, it's about all of us, but you know, I'll let, I'll let Danny give you the whole spiel, man. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll do y'all a favor. I mean, I can't debut it on the show tonight, but I'll send y'all a little sound file link so you can check it out later. Oh, thank like you. So, okay, like the sound okay. of that. Yeah, send it to the group text. You know, <laughs> the Kindle Street <laughs> Vagabond group text. Can I see Vagabond group text? Yeah, maybe I should go ahead and start that during this whole time. 
Yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. We should get a whole Atlas group chat. That would be. That actually. Pandemonium. That is a good Pandemonium, idea. Pandemonium, you're right, but it could be fun too. It'll be really fun for about a day, and then everybody yeah. mute because too many people are saying stuff. <laughs> Someone's oh someone just sending really weird memes. Yeah. <laughs> Jake. Oh. No, Jake's <laughs> memes are dank. Jake has the dank memes. Jake, Jake has right. the memes. <laughs> uh, all right, Paul. Well, thank you for being with us here tonight. Do you have Glad any questions here, for man. us? Or does anybody have any uh, other questions? For I just uh, I hope you're, uh, hope everything in Nashville is good. Please, please say yeah. to uh, hey to the roommates. And, uh, yeah, will do. And, and all the good people. Over. Yeah, and I'd love to catch up with you guys more and know what's going on, but obviously don't want to take up all that time to get the individual rundown. Y'all give me a shout. Let's let's have a phone chat later on the side. Sounds so, weird. We get to hear from you guys it. again, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, great Thank seeing you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Woohoo! Well, I think, uh, Brian, I think our next guest is, is on deck, too, if you want to give, give an introduction. Uh, yeah, so next, uh, joining us, uh, we have Matt Kalinsky. Uh, is he on yet? Do we, is he, do we know if he's connected? Mm -hmm. Yep, he's on deck. Okay. Um, but yes, <laughs> Matt Kalinsky, uh, founder and the president of the Omni Arts Group, uh, which is an artist booking and management label. And uh, their roster includes a lot of uh, really cool, successful, and up-and-coming bands, which include, you might have heard of Funk You, uh, Runaway Gin, and then Goose. Uh, and Matt is actually the manager of Goose. We, we met him uh, through that on tour in Boston. Um, but it's great to have Matt Klinsky on the program. Uh, I don't know if he's connected yet, though. Woo! It's hard to tell. I can't see. No, he, it's not here yet. We just keep clapping. Everybody clap. <laughs> smile, smile and wave. Smile and wave. <laughs> Everybody clap with us at home. This is a children's program now. Hey. Oh, what? There we go. Here What's we going go. on, Matt? Well, Matt. Hold on. I got I to gotta flip it from uh, from Facebook to Zoom here. Been, <laughs> been uh, watch slash listening. I I got dressed up for the occasion tonight, guys. How you guys doing? You're yeah. good. Great, man. Good to Dude, see you. <laughs> I got a I got a poop emoji here because my head's full of shit these days. <laughs> uh, you know, during these aggressive ended times, you know. <laughs> How how's it going? Thanks thanks for the invite, dude. I'm super super pumped to connect with you guys, man. I love you guys so much. How, how's everyone doing? Hanging in there. Doing wish, pretty good. Wish that we uh, wish we could be seeing you again in person, but uh, but soon enough. The feeling is very mutual, man. The Thank you. Cool. I hope you had a comfortable hat like that. That's what I need. Oh, it's, it's so funny. It's a little funny. warm. I I've been like I thought uh, the email said eight twenty. I know the times adjusted, but I actually <laughs> an hour early. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna put this hat on. I'm running around, and I have cool shield here oh. <laughs> i was like the rocket over there i threw it across the room it's like i was all ready to go i'm probably gonna strip down and just and go to my get a little steamy, get a little steamy in there. And this thing's hot as fuck fart <laughs> yeah. i don't know if we're we're uh we're good. here we go we can all get eye contact oh you have, oh, oh, yeah. have my son's ps4 headset on you know Heck been, yeah playing some Fortnite with him a lot recently. Getting and, good? Dude, I'm, I'm like, crushing it, actually. <laughs> it's, it's a surprise. I mean, not, I I was not good, but uh, the last couple of days, I, I've been doing that. And uh, actually, there's a couple of other industry folk out there. Uh, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. You know, like, I'm playing Fortnite, dude. That's what, what I'm doing, and... Other people are like, oh, dude, I'm on PS4, I'm playing Fortnite, cool, let's do it. So if any of you guys uh, are into that, let's uh, let's get ready to rumble. Does anybody, does anybody play Fortnite in the band? I haven't dabbled, but uh, but I've been playing some games to, to pass the time recently. I'm not a big gamer, but, you know, it's... it's uh, fun when it's fun? It's, it's fun when it's fun, and 
I've got an 11 year old, soon to be 11 year old, and it's you know it's obviously something that he likes to do at 11 years old. So, well, it's a big sport for now too. I'm getting you know my ESPN app on my phone. You know, normally it's updating me about all the happenings in the world of the MLB and the NHL, but now it's now it's all, I get push notifications every day, like the Fortnite tournament and the League of Legends tournament and everything. If it could be a good, get good at it, you could be you know semi pro. Right. I mean, there's tournaments. Um, you know, a lot of gamers are on the YouTube platform. They make a lot of money. I mean, YouTube, the, YouTube, can, you can make money well. It's mostly off advertising, I believe. But you know, a lot of them make money that way. A lot of them are using Twitch. But um, something cool last night was on Fortnite is they had this event, and it was the first time they had ever had it. And it wasn't you. You would log in and there was like a special box that you click in. They called it Party Royale. And there was like these paint balls, like these water balloons filled with paint. You throw them at each other. This is all like digital kind of stuff. But then on the screen, they had Diplo playing a show, right? It was was live. And it was the first time they kind of had ever internet, like cross over live music. Not the first time they cross over music in a video game because i believe dylan said they've had like major laser and like travis scott events and things like that before but it was live it was like him on the screen and there was cool hologram like chicks dancing (laughs) it was it was pretty neat man and i was like holy cow this is the future you know yeah i think it's pretty crazy to see it's crazy to see these media platforms you know i mean yeah combination of bands not knowing what to do during this time and you know in this video game world different platforms it's, yeah it's interesting the innovation that's happening right now for sure man like you know my head as i'm sure your guys you you guys are a touring band you know not a, a band's business isn't all about touring but you guys do tour pretty frequently but being off the road a hundred percent certainly forces you to think in places that you probably may not have gone before, or maybe not didn't have time to go before, you know. Yeah, that's and what we're doing right here. I, I know <laughs> I'm, exactly, exactly, a hundred percent. You know, and uh, I think you know I'm certainly doing that uh, with with a lot of artists. You know, Goose, we're we're doing that for sure. You know, there's part of uh, Live from Out There. Um, who uh, Ben Baruch and Dave Bisciani who co-manages Goose with me. They curated that uh, and crushed it, taking a break, well-deserved break from it this week. And I think, uh, you know, you'll see more of that. And then Goose, we just, you know, all of their festivals have been wiped out, I think, at this point for the summer. And, I mean, it's it's to be expected. Uh, but we just uh, announced... Uh, our bingo summer tour and yeah, uh, I saw oh, that. That was cool. go to goosebingotour.com more information coming this week uh, cool. next, um and there love the art for that too over the coming weeks you know and stuff like that but it's a really really cool concept and uh you know that's just what you have to do um you know as as an artist you know musician or, you know just is really hustle right now and think of cool creative ideas that are going to stand out to allow you to create a revenue stream for yourself, you know? So I think it's pretty incredible that you guys with goose, um, you got such great video throughout that whole winter tour that you guys did. It's really, it's really paid off that you guys have been able to, to kind of showcase the recent live material. Sure. So, I mean, Oh, you know, the video stuff, I mean, Peter on Spock, you know, every night goes and sets up those cameras. He sets up, like, the in-ear monitors for everyone for us to, like, record, you know, our shows. He's in the van or he's at home and he's cutting the stuff. I mean, he's just, like, a blessing to the to the whole operation and, and allowing that to happen, you know. But we really, you know got it dialed that stuff dialed in last year and and peter uh you know really that fall tour you know that we played with you guys that weekend in boston like still one of my favorite nights of the whole 
fall. Um, that was a crazy fall. night. It was a great, great so night. Funny. It was a great crowd. The whole, you know, us, us selling out the Middle East upstairs and playing in that room and it, like just the vibe with you guys <laughs> sonically, only... everything about it, like. I, you know, I want it to happen again at some point. I'm sure it will. Like, I have no doubt that in the future that will happen, but that was super cool. But, you know, we really got that stuff dialed in like right around that time. And uh, because we did that, we were super fortunate to be able to, you know, with this just halt of everything, you know, this abrupt stoppage uh, to have that, and uh, you know, it's it just really is a blessing. So it's it's great. Um, so what are you guys up to, man? You guys writing some music? A little bit, yeah. Um, I think we're all kind of working on some stuff. We're not really, uh, you know, we can't really. We talked about this a little earlier. We can't really practice or anything uh, with the restrictions, um, and you know, trying to stay safe, of course. Uh, so um, we're just kind of trying to work on stuff. We do have some projects. Uh, we have an album that's done and one that's almost done. One's coming out soon and the other one is coming out later. <laughs> really specific. Right, um, right. But, uh, but so we do have a lot of stuff on our plate. We've been trying to keep busy too. And like you, it's good to hear that you're keeping really positive um, uh, about the situation, is that, that it is a blessing in certain ways, um, having to think about things differently and do things differently. And I think things will get back to a certain semblance of, kind of normalcy in the industry, but there's so much new things that we're learning about um, the music worlds, uh, both on kind of the management side and on the like creativity side uh, that, uh, cheers. Hey Matt, I swear <laughs> hey Matt, what's, what's a funny story you got from tour you want to share? Oh my gosh. Uh... I'm curious. So I heard you guys talking about Steamboat um, earlier, and Steamboat's one of my favorite places. Um, usually when I'm up there, my experiences are over at Old Town Pub. Or I, I know you guys were talking about Schmiggities with the Vagabonds. Do you guys play Old Town Pub or Schmiggities? We used to Schmiggities. But... Schmiggities, okay. Yeah. That, and I think you said that was like your first time up there. Right, right. Yeah. So we're over, I, I've always gone over to the Old Town Pub. This goose did a two night run there in December. Uh, and it was Peter's birthday. Uh, basically, that whole Colorado tour was like Peter's birthday run. And it was, <laughs> it was super, super cool. Um, but, you know, this is, I don't know if this is like, like a funny story. It's just kind of like a wild story, right? So, Peter and I think our light guy, Andrew Getty, who's just like Andrew Getty, went up to one of the hot springs. There's one that's like way up in the mountains and there's one that's like closer to town. And they, Peter and I had gone to the one like closer to town the day before and they wanted to go the one that was harder to get to. And the weather was just like horrible and I guess it's like a rock road to get up there. And they were, they're cruising, you know, up the hill to get to the hot springs and they like spun out and like ended up like hitting a tree and a ditch and stuff like that. And it's kind oh of like scary, totally scary. Right. And it's a snowstorm and blah, blah, blah. And they're just like, you know, cell service is kind of shitty. And there's this in the band band. This is no, this is like uh, a friend of ours, I think, or a friend of theirs that I don't know if he was, uh, a friend that we had met because he was like on the run or if he was from Connecticut where the, where the guys are from, mm. but, uh, someone comes down the mountain, it just is passing and it's like a truck from the, the hot spring. And the guy is like, well, there's like six people in the truck that the car that like wiped out the SUV. And he was like, well, I could only take two of you guys. Uh, and Peter's just like, well, what about the rest of us? And he was like, I, I don't know. He, he, he's like, cell service isn't good. He was like, you know, but I can I can take two people and then they can go call and get a ride for you guys or something. So it was kind of like a scary situation. Yeah. Sort of. And right as this is going down, this car 
of people drive by and they're like, yo, it's Peter from Goose, man. And Peter's like, yo, our car crashed. We need to go to the hot, we're trying to go to the hot springs, but we, we were trying to go to the hot springs, but they had been stuck for quite a while at this point. At this point, like they needed to get back, get cleaned up, go to sound check and all this stuff. And the guy's like, it's all good, man. Like I got you. And he drives them back into town and, uh, and I can't remember, he was like, I'll, I'll give you a ride on one condition if you play, um, gosh, I can't remember the band or the name of the song. Maybe you guys really remember. It's the song that goes, and she's everywhere to me. When oh, that's I Michelle my Branch. Yeah, so, like, they had covered it, like, one time, like, when Peter first, like, joined the band. as like, I think at a private party. And this guy knew that somehow. And he was like, I'll give you a ride if you play Michelle Branch. And oh, my just, God. And, like, so he, 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 he wasn't really serious. But yeah, they yeah, just, yeah. like, they blasted the song on the way back. Not the Goose version, like the actual version. And Peter comes <laughs> back and he's telling this story. And, the, okay, so I remember where this crew was from. They were from freaking San Diego, dude. And the band had never played, like, the West Coast. So this is, like, a big deal for the, for Peter and... And like it was, he knew how special it would have been for this crew of people. There was like six or seven of them from San Diego, that like did this whole Colorado tour. So he ends up like coming to the band. Like he's like, dude, like I, it would mean a lot to me if you guys like take the time and like relearn this song with me. So they literally like relearned it in like ten minutes, and they're playing it in the basement, like where the green room is. And I'm like, man, they're not gonna be able to. They're not gonna be able to pull this off, and they totally <laughs> did it. And like the you know typical Ocean Beach, California, like rah, style, like they start like a mosh pit, this little bar in Steamboat Springs, and it was just like a really cool, like special moment. So kind of a wild story, super special moment that only can happen to you like when you're on the road. You know what I mean? Like I know. Yeah. Um, so not a funny story, but. That's the first thing that came to mind. But mat. definitely a good story. If I have a couple more of these. I yeah, can. yeah. Pull out a Brendan Bayless here. <laughs> Why not? That's his thing. Brendan Bayless is doing this thing on Fridays right now. I don't know if you guys have seen this. He calls it's Humphreys McGee Fridays. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> What kind yeah. of wine you have in there, Matt? Is that the, the cab stuff you got going on? There? So yeah. no. So funny enough, I'm a white wine guy. I like the oh. Savvy B. Really? I like the Savignon Blanc. Savvy um, <laughs> yeah, I like the Savvy B. But uh, I am drinking a Malbec. It's from like Argentina. I just go to like the store and I'll buy like random bottles. We, I really don't drink a ton at home historically, but the last six weeks. Is, have changed my mind about that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so uh, I'm drinking a Malbec. I don't know the brand. I do have a Chianti on deck because it's the last glass. Do you have fava beans? Huh? <laughs> do you have fava beans to go with that Chianti? I don't, man. Like, like I said, I, I'm not much of a drinker, but... <laughs> Maybe that's, I'll, that's a uh, that's a song for the lamb. So. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, not, I'm not like a big movie guy. Like I, I could quote, I could quote like every line to the Blues Brothers, but that's about that. Maybe gonna quote one movie. That's a good movie to quote, though. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Funny, funny <laughs> tour story. So the so Goose again. They just played this cruise called the rock legends cruise and like Roger Daltrey's on this thing. And, uh, the singer for like sticks or something and bad company, Sebastian box, skid row, like, wow, you know, like, but like really sick musicians too. And like vocalists and stuff like that. Uh, there was a gentleman, his name's Gary Hoey. He's like a shredder, um, from like the nineties, uh, wrote a song called Hocus Pocus. I think it was a big song. 
I, and he does this thing on the cruise every year. It's like the 10th year or something like that. Every Saturday, does the Gary Hoey Super Jam, and everyone shows up, and everyone's having a good time. And uh, you know, Rick and Peter are like, yeah, let's let's do it. And, like, we're totally out of place. Goose is totally out of place, like with all these other musicians. The Taz was on the boat, and Lark and Poe, and they're Lark and Poe, man, those chicks are amazing. But like we were kind of like in our own little niche, and then there was like just like rock stars, you know, like pleather <laughs> pants and leather vests and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but still, seriously nice people. Anyway, it's the Super Jam, and um, all of a sudden Rick and Peter are on stage doing "Tush" by ZZ Top with like the singer of Skid Row and, and Chicago, right? And Gary Hoey, and then then they did like "Pride and Joy," Stevie Ray Vaughan, like great tunes, right? I mean, ZZ Top is just they just rip. And, yeah, they did. And then, and then Gary Hoey turns around, and I'm a, I'm with this like crowd of like 20 people. You know, we just drink on stage, and everyone's got their phones up. And he's like, "Does anyone know? Anyone know the words of Johnny Be Good?" And he's like, "Someone started playing like the beginning riff, right?" Did it, and and I'm like me, and he was like, "You're singing," <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god." Right. <laughs> and, and like you know, John Lombardi's there, coach, and uh, Ben Atkin, like uh, the Goose Crew that we had on the boat. And I'm like, you know, it's not really something like manager like really does. I'm like, I just kind of <laughs> said it as a joke. And and uh, someone from our crew's like, oh, I'm, I'm like, should I do it? And they're like, I don't know, man. And then it was like coming up to the one, like the deep down and losing. Yeah. And I just walked right out there. I grabbed the mic, dude. <laughs> and I started singing this. Yeah. Thing. And that's, you know, like, I, it, it was a memorable moment, but also very fucking funny. That and is that's so sweet. Funny. Yeah. So that was pretty Very cool. cool. What hey, is that's, the funniest that's awesome. thing? Tell, can you guys tell me a funny tour moment? No, actually, can I, <laughs> can I make it more specific? You know, it doesn't have to be tour. Can you tell me a funny story about Matt Washburn? And it can't have anything to do with jellyfish. <laughs> Has he ever done that to you guys? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. So There's a Matt, great picture of Lewis and Matt. I, I love, Matt, Matt and I talk every day, and we very often talk about you guys. And, you know, we've got a history. But Matt does this thing where he's like, yo, yo, bro, high five. And he goes to give you the high five. And he goes, jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was a thing, that was a thing in high school. I remember that. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> he did that to me one time. I, I think I mean, he did when we were at the Royal American. Yeah. In, in, um, Charleston. Charleston. In Charleston. Yeah. And this yeah. is Matt, Matt Washburn, our, this is our booking agent. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, I think he did that one. Too. There was some awesome show. Um, what was it Little Stranger, I think, was playing? Yeah. At the Royal American, and we were in town because we oh, had yeah. this night, but we had a night off, so we were staying in Charleston. And so he met up with Matt Washburn and Caleb, um, and uh, uh, Caleb works with Matt. Um, and... Um, uh, just kind of had a really wild night. Lee Dye was there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's in the chat, I think. Um, it was it was uh, quite a blast. Um, but so that might have been the only time he did the jellyfish thing. <laughs> yeah, my my first memory of Washburn is at Smith's Old Pub. Is that what it's called? Smith's Old Bar in Atlanta. In it is that Atlanta? Is that the one where you have to climb the stairs? Yeah, the big stairs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. yeah. Yeah. So that was my first memory of him, and he had, like. That was also with the big bonds, I think, right? Yeah, yeah that was with the big yeah. bonds, yeah. And he and I bonded over Pink Floyd's Pompeii video. And that, right. that was my first friendship moment with Matt Watson. So it's not necessarily funny, but, you know, heartfelt. You know yeah. what? I, I, should, I think I was saying funny because that's kind of like how I started digging in with, <laughs> with what you asked me. But, you know, just anything, like... I I love this. Like we, you guys want to like do this for like six more hours. Like this is this <laughs> this easily, is what it's all about. Man. 
this is what it's all about. Like, everyone must, like, get, like, three bottles of liquor before you can show up. Requirement for the next Zoom call. <laughs> have, yeah, have, I'm going to grab another drink, actually. Yeah! <laughs> have you seen this? There's, um, there's like, sports leagues that, that do, um, you know, like, indoor soccer or whatever, but you have to be legally drunk. Like, if you don't blow a .08, like, they, like at any point, the other team can breathalyze you and... If you don't blow a .08, then you have to sit out until you do. That's, that's epic. Where is this and how can I join? I, I watch <laughs> videos online. And I know there's a comedy troupe. There, there's, there's like an improv comedy troupe. Um, I cannot remember where I heard about this. There's an improv comedy troupe in, in L.A. that does that. You have to be legally drunk. And you can find some videos of the soccer, of people doing the, the Indoor soccer league, and it's pretty funny. You know, it sounds like a blast, right? So if I just like Google like soccer must be drunk, like <laughs> league, yeah, yeah, that'll oh, probably work. <laughs> yeah. It's the internet; it'll it'll happen. Cool. Yeah, but I mean that'd be good for Zoom calls. Like you know, you have to be drunk to be on the on the Zoom call. Yeah, Brian Roy, everybody. You have to be drunk to be on the Zoom call. I'm drinking alcohol right now. I'm drinking water. Hey, you you know what would be funny is if... So, I don't know how you guys have, like, your Zoom boxes. Are your guys' boxes across the top or on the side? Yeah, all on the top for me. But I think the stream is the side, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, whoever... So if we all do the wave, like starting with me, because I'm all the way on the left side. If we do the wave and it, it, at whoever it works for, must drink. You want to try it one time? Whoever it works for, it's definitely gonna work. <laughs> let's go, oh. let's go. All right, I'm gonna start first. I think you're on the bottom, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait, did you get to the different order than I do? Wait, who's on That's the far what I'm left? Saying. It's, I think it's different for everybody. Yeah. The, the one yeah. on the stream, it's it's Lewis, then Jake, then myself, then Ryan, then You know, Matt. just adapt. So what we're, we're just saying adapt is, to oh. What we're saying is it didn't go in order for anybody. Hey. It, went in order, it went in order for me. <laughs> I'll drink, Come here. We'll, I'll drink to that. Should sure. I read the Budweiser can again? No. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Well, cool. You well, uh, you know, good, good stuff. You know, we're just figuring out this platform, whether it be the wave or whether it be. Uh, hey, man. Everything else. I'm, I'm <laughs> in, dude. Like, I'll do this every week with you guys. I don't. Yo, Matt. Be a guest. I'll just hang out. <laughs> yeah. have, you found, have you found one of the video services to be like particularly better than the others? One, the other ones. This is our first time trying the zoo, so. Yeah. Um. So the Rocky Mountain Boys. We, they all live in different cities. And so, you know, the, the objective at first was like, hey, let's try to find something where everyone can play live at the same time. And that's really difficult. It's always off, you know, somewhere. Um, so they just did Zoom for the first time and, and they're all just playing like, rotating and playing songs they're not able to play together still uh i mean zoom you know to facebook is is solid um i don't know if you're able to are you able to um go to any other platform other than facebook with zoom um I'm not sure. i mean it's i think for sure. what you guys are are trying to do it's it's good i think that um you know, the, like, you guys digging into, like, this OBS and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's some stuff out there that that could work. Um, you guys are obviously not all in one place. So um, there's got to be a, a way. There, there's definitely a way. I think there's some platforms that, you know, the ones that are more cost efficient, um, you know, are stuff like Zoom and, and it, it serves its purpose. But then, you know, certainly I think that there's platforms that are a little bit more, you know, intricate that are going to cost some money, you know. Um, yeah. And if, 
I think a lot of people are trying to be a little bit conservative with spending and stuff like that, right? Um, yeah. yeah, like I wondered, I wondered if like Cisco Systems or something had something, but you know, that's like corporate, like you can have thousands of dollars subscription stuff. Generally. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's. Um, I think it's. Like I think that there's platforms out there that are are certainly better, and it's you know it's like subscription based, and it's you know what I found with some of my artists, you know, doing free stuff on less desirable platforms uh, as opposed to doing paid stuff, is that we're right now like sure we want to like make a couple bucks, but what's important to us. Most, most of the time with, with various projects is to be able to reach the fans and communicate with them and know that, uh, know that, make sure the fans know that the band is there for them. And then it may feels good to the band too to know that their fans are still there supporting them. And obviously everyone's fan base seems to be doing that, you know, right now, which is yeah. great. So. Shout out to the people watching this right now and later in the future, in the past. Indeed. For sure. You know, hey, uh, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to cut anything off, but I do want to bring in our, I want to bring in our last guest. But Matt, if you want to hang around and, and stick around for this one, or... it, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna migrate to uh, where my, this is Johnny Buck. Like, this I is say... Johnny Buck. Okay, I have never. Hold on, I can pull this back in. <laughs> Never met Johnny Buck in person, so this is wonderful. Will, this keep it, keep it in theme, and do it on the internet. It's gonna, like half and half, then. Yeah. Go so, uh, so our next, uh, our next guest tonight uh, is uh, the fa- one of the founders of the wonderful Tina Festival Rooster Walk down in Martin, Woo! Virginia, um, and we're very, very excited to have Johnny Buck on on our show tonight, and uh, excited to. Decided to pick his brain in a, in a second. Hey, what's up, Johnny? John, am I in the wave? You're in the wave. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, how's it going? What's going on? I'm great, man. How are y'all? We're doing, we're doing all right. We're hanging in there. Good. Thank you so much for having me. Still here. Yeah, thanks for being on this. We, we appreciate it. This is oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's all new for us, and we're, uh, we're we're you know seeing what we can do. No doubt. Yeah, not bad. Also, Johnny, meet uh, meet Matt Kalinsky here. Uh, uh, Matt is my man. What up? How are you, brother? Doing good, man. Many an email that we have exchanged over the years. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> have you got your economic impact payment from DJT yet? Working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same Z's. All right. <laughs> Nice. Well, this is this is great. They asked me if I wanted to stick around for a minute, and I said, you know what, I I'd love to put a face to the name. So yeah. it's good to see you, man. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Oh, Very cool. Cheers. I like the uh, I like the koozie there. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, not bad. Well, so uh, so if if anyone out there doesn't know, uh, so Rooster Walk is uh, pretty pretty. Freaking phenomenal music festival in Martinsville, Virginia. Uh, I know I can say it myself, and I and I think I speak for the rest of the band by, uh, by saying that it's one of the most enjoyable music festival experiences I've ever had. Uh, Thank you. We've we've played it the past two years now, and uh, this this last year we we stuck around for all four days and uh, just had a ball. It was a blast. It yeah, was man. so. You know, we're exhausted by Monday, and that's how you want to leave a music festival. Right, right. Well, thank you all so much, man. It's been a, it's been a blast, uh, you know, building it, and uh, obviously having you guys the last couple of years, and, and having you all play multiple sets throughout the weekend is amazing. That's always a good time, yeah. Um, yeah. So I love, uh, I I love the story of Rooster Walk too. It's pretty incredible how you guys, uh, how you started it out. Um, it, uh, if, you, if you just want to give a quick, quick little summary of, of kind of the start of Rooster Walk. Sure. So um, <clears throat> Rooster Walk was, uh, was founded by myself and William Baptist, uh, who we grew up together in Martinsville, Virginia, which is where the festival takes place. Uh, it's a, always been a pretty small town. It's, right now it's about 14,000 people, and when we Martinsville is probably like eighteen or 19,000 people. 
it was one of those towns where like the, the kids who were in your first grade class were still in your like ninth grade class and they were still in your, your senior year class. Um, <laughs> so a couple of our uh, of our very best friends passed away in our mid twenties, and one of them was nicknamed uh, Brewster the Rooster. The other was uh, his given name was Walker, and so um, when Walker passed away, it was about uh, thirteen months after Edwin had passed. Him and I wanted to do something to remember them, but we wanted to do something that they would have appreciated, you know, like not bake sale. So uh, yeah. decided to do a music festival, and um, we're a nonprofit, and a portion of our proceeds go to a scholarship fund that's named after uh, Edwin and Walker High School. And then we also support a music instrument program at the uh, city and county uh, systems so we give small grants to the band directors at the middle schools and, the schools. and then we also like old instruments get donated to us like the marching band saxophone that's been sitting in somebody's closet for 20 years we donated to us we fix it up we donate it to the band program for entry level so that any kid who like has an interest to start band but maybe can't afford a saxophone the the band director owns a bunch of, you know, refurbished instruments that you can say, hey, you can use this for two years and hopefully, you know, hopefully you really like band and two years in, you're going to need to give it up to uh, to be able to return it to like a new kid who's just starting. But it, the idea is that no kid who wants to start band gets turned away just because they don't have access to it. As a, as a product of the, uh, of uh, grade school that's awesome. Marching bands and concert bands. I, I quite appreciate that. that yeah. yeah. Um, and so, so you know, like the first Rooster Walk was like literally three, 400 people. Um, you know, after the fact, we said it was a thousand people. Uh, that was a lie. <laughs> and uh, you know, we didn't really know. Like we, we never put on a festival. We had worked some, some events, but like we didn't, you know, People, a lot of people asked, like, how we were able to, like, kind of make it work early. And it was like, well, luckily our, our budget for everything was so small that we couldn't really get ourselves in trouble by booking a band that had the tech requirements we couldn't provide or security <laughs> we couldn't provide. Yeah. Or a band in the early years that would have brought so many people that it would have overrun us, you know? Like, we kind of, we kind of grew at a pace unintentionally that like we were able to learn and evolve and keep up with. Cool. And what would you- last year was like around 5,000 people, uh, and Thursday through Sunday, uh, festival. What would you say was that first band that you guys booked that kind of up to the, up the ante. And when you realized like, okay, we are going to start bringing in. More. Sure. So we've had like one of the things that's, been the keys to Rooster Walk success has been the way the community of Martinsville and Henry County has really like embraced the festival and the, the concept of it. Mm-hmm. That was from like volunteers, not only during, but volunteers, you know, year round uh, who are helping out, but also like local businesses who, who sponsor uh, an aspect of the festival. And that's it for is a Fortune 500 company that's based in Henry County. And they came in uh, year three and wanted to uh, support what we were doing. And they uh, they said, you know, what's, what's the way that we could help you all the most? And we said, you yeah, know, well, honestly, like, the bands are, are ultimately going to be what brings people to the event. Um, so year three, we had the infamous String Dusters as a headliner. And Bassett's support grew for the next couple of years. In year five, we had Leftover Salmon and Dumpster Funk. And that year five was probably the first year where, you know, we're looking around, there are like hundreds of people that we have no idea who they are. <laughs> a bunch of bands that like we would have driven two hours to go pay 20 bucks to see. And it was like, oh man, like, we're putting on a real festival. <laughs> yeah. What year was that, Johnny? So that would have been five, 24. 2013, I guess. This uh, this year, we uh, Rooster Walk 12. Mm-hmm. But, you know, obviously we have uh, not having Rooster Walk. Uh, we'll have Rooster Walk 12 in May of 2021. Full cool. 
<laughs> yeah. So what, so, any uh, any any plans on uh, using using this summer wisely to uh, to kind of build on build on the festival for next year? Yeah, you know, so there's some stuff um, that we had already kind of put in the works. Uh, we got a grant from because we're a nonprofit, so we gotten a grant from uh, the local Kiwanis Club that um, was super generous. Uh, Help us build a picnic shelter in our kids' area at the festival. Oh, we had actually already broken ground on that uh, before all this crazy stuff hit. So, um, you know, uh, it did. It didn't. The grant was like extremely generous. It didn't cover cover 100 percent of the cost, but it covered well more than half. Yeah. Um, and you know, like we might have hit the pause button on it if uh, you know we had known Corona was coming, but. <laughs> Once you like have dug holes and are like pouring concrete and stuff, like you, you gotta you gotta finish the job. So it'll keep you keep yourself busy, you know. That's right. So uh, we're, we're about to have that finished. That'll be a really nice addition to the kids area to have, uh, you know, a large shaded area for uh, it'll cover the kids stage. Also, um, a shaded area for a lot of the kids' activities, arts and crafts, and if it is raining, be able to move a lot of the stuff through there. Um, also working on some other um, some other projects uh, around the property. You know, William Baptist lives at, at Pops Farm, and he's the, the guy who's in charge of, like, all things venue-related. He's the, the director of the of festival staff during the festival. But he's the guy who's really, like, living that um, that world right now of all the, all the stuff we're trying – all the venue stuff we can do for cheap right now. Um, you know, if sure. you – ground and tear up you know grass uh better do it now and, and give it a full year to grow back than waiting and doing it next spring and you know yeah uh, i'm not i'm not sure if you know we we're all we're pretty good friends with with william and, and jennifer at this point we uh yes. incredibly strange coincidence they happen to be in myrtle beach and we were in myrtle beach playing at the <laughs> blues on the deck and he told me that actually yeah, they were like, "Hey, this band was at Rooster Walk this year. I think right. go check them out." And we ended up crashing at their at their hotel room because we didn't have a place to stay that night. And right, the weird Mystica. thing where we've run into them in like every single city except for the cities we actually live in. So right, <laughs> perfect. It's funny to see that, but oh, it's not bad. Um, and one of the one of the other takeaways from that I really, really love is how just green and, and sustainable it is for, for a festival of so many people. Um, and I, I would just be interested to pick your brain on how you go about getting a large gathering of people and, and creating the smallest footprint possible. Well, you know, it's, it's got to be a priority um, of the organizers. And um, you've got to... It's not a thing that's going to like make you money as a festival organizer. So when I say it's got to be a priority, not only do you have to like put the plans in place to compost, to uh, require vendors to buy com- compostable cups and plates and napkins and and silverware, you know, made of cardboard or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, but you got to have a plan on um, on how to get it composted after the fact like you know if you if you collect compost in a you know in a trash can says compost at an event but then it just winds up in a landfill it's not getting composted it's not doing its job so you kind of got to plan it out we bring in uh, a really awesome group of folks that are part of our our staff that are the green team they sort i mean god bless them they sort every bag of trash make sure there isn't an aluminum can, you know, that wasn't put in recycling or a compostable cardboard, you know, French fry container that wasn't put in the compost thing. Uh, and then we work with uh, some different, you know, recycling companies, trash companies, compost uh, folks to, to get it taken care of after the fact. Uh, obviously the, the clean canteen, the steel pints instead of plastic cups, that's something that a lot of folks do which is great because you're preventing, uh, you know, you're preventing one guy who drinks a lot of beer from, from putting, you know, dozens of plastic cups in the landfill. Yeah. And I know, I know most of us still have our Rooster Walk cups. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> and that's the cool thing too with those is that it, it does become like a collector's item uh, or a souvenir maybe is a better term for like mm-hmm. the two again. Um, and once you pay, you know, five bucks for something, you're, you're trying to keep track of it. Whereas if it's just a, a plastic cup, you yeah. know, people think of it as something they throw away. So. Good luck, Lou. Number 10. <laughs> Look at you. I got two of them. <laughs> oh, nice. And it's, and it's mine. <laughs> but it's mine. Oh, man. Oh, I see the, uh, Johnny, I see uh, the South Hill Banks guys are saying what's up in the, in the comments. What up? I don't got, I, I don't have, now, are your comments like, oh, you're looking at social media? Or you, yeah, you gotta yeah, I got the YouTube, the YouTube stream. For that. I see, yeah. I see. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not missing out on, like, comments here on my Zoom. Nah, you're, there's <laughs> there some, there's some good stuff. That people have asked. We've got a, a good friend, Scott Cosin, who's been to six, six of the Rooster Walks. Hell yeah, Scott. <laughs> He's a big fan, but. He, uh, he wants to know how many ticket holders rolled uh, rolled over until next year or donated their tickets to your nonprofit organization. So we were um, super duper fortunate, and we owe a huge thank you. Um, we had about approximately 75% of people who bought a ticket say, I will hold my ticket and come next year. Very good. Yeah. Approximately 25% who needed the refund. Uh, we felt like super humbled and grateful with that number because I guarantee that there's a lot more than 25% of the people who like really could have used that money. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we weren't like we weren't BSing when we said in our announcement that like, hey, friends, supporters, if if you need the refund, we got you covered. No questions asked. Refund for three weeks. But if you don't need it, like it would really help us out if you if you didn't ask for it just to ask for it. Um, because it's the, in advance right? for a good time in 2021. Yeah, yeah. And it's just you know it's just crazy right now. We're hoping uh, like everybody else to be able to put on shows in you know the fall, late summer, or the fall. But like no one knows. And even if your state allows you to put on a, a music concert in October, like. How many people from general public will feel comfortable buying a ticket and coming to a, to a concert? Like, we yeah. just, it's it's super wild. I mean, hopefully everybody will, but we yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, I mean that that retention ratio of seventy five percent. You know, from my experience over the last you know six weeks or so is phenomenal. That's I mean, yeah. like it's usually the other way around. Yeah, it really is. You know, so I mean that I think that really is a reflection on you and your team and the event that you put on, man. And I think you should really you should really be proud of that. You know, um, that's really cool. Yeah, well, like I said, man, we're just like we felt so humbled and grateful. Like you know, no no BS about it. That because we didn't know. Like when you announce it and you're saying, hey. Three weeks of no questions asked refunds, and you post on that fuck on that on that social media um, message, yeah. that e blast. You're like, man, well, we'll see what happens. And, How long uh, did you sit on that email before you uh, <laughs> sent or the? I, I I you know I, I edited that one you know a few more times than normal, <laughs> trying to trying to make it as 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 uh, as perfect as I could, you know, and in just trying to get the message out there that like you know. If folks need the money, like it's it's their money, not ours. We haven't provided the festival yet, and we're not going to be able to do it this year. But it's something you can live without. Like, yeah, it, yeah it, very very similar position over here from the artist side is that we want the money in people's hands if they need it. You know, we're not trying yeah. to be be greedy here. You know, because just because we're trying to make a buck as well you know like people need money they need to take care of themselves and their families and that that's what comes first you know yep. hey johnny i got i have a question for johnny because you were talking about doing you know if they're if you're able to do shows obviously you know that's a it's become a rabbit hole of the conversation for sure <laughs> right um but what where are you doing shows now because the rives is gone Right. You know what? What's the what's the what's the status of that? Are they rebuilding? 
and I'm not. I'm not no, really so yeah, so the, so for folks who don't know, in Martinsville, like Rooster Walk, the nonprofit company, also used to put on um, shows year round uh, at a little theater in downtown Martinsville called the Reeves Theater. Reeves Theater. And it, we had our last show there. We had a beer festival called Rooster Walk, like B R E W. Um, that was uh, early September. It was a Saturday, and then on Sunday during the during the day, like late afternoon, we had an electrical fire that started upstairs, immediately spread into the attic because the building was very old. It was from the um, the twenties or the nineteen thirties, and so it was total loss. Um, Building is not going to be rebuilt. It actually is like literally, uh, as we speak, it's been completely gutted by the whatever the the crews of people would come in, but right before you tear it down with a wrecking ball or whatever, uh. so about to get uh, leveled. And uh, we've been doing before the, the Rona, we were doing what we call Reeves on the Road, which was just bouncing around the different venues in Martinsville Henry County. Um, and doing basically pop-up concerts. Uh, cool. We promote it you know, like we would a normal show, so you promote it for several months, but it's like a lot of venues that are available for one-night rental, the, maybe they have weddings or um, something like that, and we bring in, you know, not only the normal sound and lights production, but bring in staging and bring in, bring in power distribution and, like, just all the stuff to turn, a, you know, whatever, a country club ballroom or the old the old Bassett, Virginia, uh, historic train depot into <laughs> a, a music venue for one night. Um, Heck yeah. People are actually really digging it uh, because, you know, it's a chance to go see a lot of different spaces, even though Martinsville and your county is a small community. Like, still a lot of places that either you've never been in them as a fan or, like, you haven't been in it in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so it's crazy how a concert... experience, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, a concert can really, like, transform a space and right. something and, that never was before, yeah. And so the other cool thing about that was, like, trying to pair the, the band and the genre of music with the room. So, like, there's one, there's one, what used to be a high school back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, it's now, like, an event center, a conference center, but they have this beautiful old auditorium, like, 800 seats bolted to the floor. Um, that is a killer room for the right band, but not the right room for like a rock and roll band where everybody wants to be standing and down close and dancing because you got all these seats bolted to the floor. Sure. So we were it's it was fun too, like pairing different different rooms with different types of music. Uh and and folks were reacting really well to it. So when we get back on the horse, um we'll be doing that. We'll also in the warm weather you know, the Pops Farm, the, the Rooster Walk Festival venue, we have a year-round lease on. So cool. in an ideal situation, you know, we, we get back to where in the fall we can sneak in a, a, a show or two where folks can camp at Pops and, like, get out there and get their get their, their Rooster Walk fixed, even if it's only, you know, a couple bands on a Saturday night. That'd be a fun time. I think that, one, you know, once people are comfortable with that, you know, they're – once I think that you know, there's certainly going to be people that are apprehensive. You know, uh, you know, I know I certainly have no shame in saying that I'm going to have PTSD from this whole time right now. Like, you know, I, I mean, we work in the industry where we have to be around all these people all the time, right? Yeah. But it, it certainly affected you know my mental health when I go to the grocery store. I'm like all skewed out, like, oh man stay six feet away and like someone coughs and it's like the whole store clears out and stuff like that. But I think once people get over that hump and we'll, we'll get comfortable with it again, but it's, it's certainly going to be a process, you know, and I think one that, uh, you know, we can't just, I think from our end uh, of people working on this side of the industry, we can't, respond to it like immediately like we have to let it happen it's gonna it's probably gonna take a year two years man to really kind of get back to that feeling i think that there's going to be you know you're gonna go to some places in the country where people are just i mean it's already like that people are just ready to go and they would rage it and it might be different for different styles of music too 
you know, I think, you know, the EDM crowd's always been, you know, not afraid to show their skin and grind against each other. You might not see that change too much, but maybe you will. Maybe promoters, if they're smart, you know, be a little bit, you know, more tough on their their crowds, you know. Um, I don't know. Everyone's got got their, their different take on it. Like, Johnny, as a promoter, I mean, where, where is your head at? Is your head at, you know, like, okay, as soon as, you know, the green light goes to max gatherings, I'm going to do shows, or are you on the side uh, where some people are where just because the green light means, like, I says I can have shows, do you still feel the sense of responsibility to make sure that people are okay and, and sure. not – and where you're not moving too fast. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say for me personally, if we're talking the fall of this year, I'm on the, uh, the latter where, um, as opposed to the former, you know, just because technically you're allowed to have the event. Um, is it like ethically the right thing to do? Because I do think as soon as there's a green light, whether you're talking about a concert or a sporting event or whatever, as soon as there's a green light, there's going to be a portion of the public who either um, don't give an F about it or maybe they're too uninformed to know that they should care, who will rush back. Now, there'll still be a huge chunk of your normal patrons who will be like, no way. But um, so uh, if you're talking about this fall, then... Yeah, I think not only does it have to be, like, legally permissible, but you have to feel like it's safe to do that type of thing. You're not putting your patrons, your staff, your volunteers, your artists in harm's way. Um, The one caveat I would have to that is just, and luckily for us, I think in this fall we're not going to be in these shoes, but, like, if you're a promoter where you literally, like, if you can't put on a show before December, you may go business and your venue never exists anymore. Um, like the reality certain, for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. At a certain point we will get there too. If we just go months and months where you cannot have any shows, which means you cannot have the income, then like mm-hmm. that, that will come, that day will come for everyone. But, um, we, I don't think we'll be in that shape in, you know, September, October. But if you were, it would be a really, it would be a different thing. And you might just have to message the heck out of it to people where like, you're almost like giving them every reason to think twice about coming from the public safety side. And yet still say, if you want to come, you know, that's your decision. And you're signing this waiver, for example, says you can't sue us. Um, Oh man. Right. That's that's opening up a whole new can of, Things that we haven't thought about in the COVID nineteen <laughs> rabbit hole. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's really hard to balance those two things. But no one's really interesting to see. You, know, you, you have to. You have to start somewhere, though. You know yeah. what? Which, like, I, I mean, I don't personally agree with what Georgia is doing right now and how fast they're going with things. And I think that there's people and you know, uh, local politicians at the local level and regional level in Georgia that don't agree with it either. But I do respect the you have to start somewhere mentality because you do, you know. Um, you don't know what's going to happen with the, the numbers, you know, unless you start moving forward at some point, you know. So. And I, I think that, you know, um, it's pretty obvious that once there's like a, a vaccine, the vast majority of people will feel comfortable going back to normal. But I think before there's a vaccine, there's a chance that there's there are medications that treat the symptoms and basically eliminate the chance. Yeah, Lysol. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so, you know, while a Budweiser at the show may only be $4, a shot of Lysol is like 20 <laughs> creative on how you make money (laughs) you got your liquor license your abc license your cdc license yeah (laughs) like it gives it gives like the term a shot in a beer a whole new meaning 
Shot us all, you know, shot us all. <laughs> shot us all. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's crazy. Well, you know, you know, it'll be, we'll, I guess, just see what the future holds. But, um, you know, back to the, what you were talking about the Reeves earlier, um, I'm, really, I'm really glad that um, we, we were fortunate to be able to have one chance to play there um, last uh, last March, I believe it was, we were watching UVA in the upper theater lose at the ACC tournament. Uh, on the movie screen. And there, and we're like, you know, freaking out watching on the big screen. And there's a bunch of Virginia Tech fans around us cheering that you lose. <laughs> but, uh, but, it, but it was a true pleasure to get to, to play that room. It was, it was awesome. Um, and, that, and that Martinsville crowd just really loves really loves music it was it was a cool experience um but we we actually we have a recording of the show um that we're going to be releasing online um sometime later later this week and, and the, the plan for the end of the show was to play uh, uh our aged white cheddar our song from the reeves theater to play us out tonight but, uh, yeah so it's out there in the world for awesome. some context yeah yeah so johnny Johnny, have you been to every single Rooster Rock then? You, yeah. I'm assuming you've attended every single one. Yeah. Do you have any particular like like shows that like really stood out to you as super sweet or like memorable moments over the years? Because I've been to I've been to two Rooster Rocks and they both you know go down in my mind as amazing festivals. Lots of fun. Lots well, of thank fun. you. Um, yeah, I mean definitely. I think you know it kind of um, kind of divided up into like phases of the festival's growth. So like a super sweet show the first couple of years when like the crowd was, you know, five or 600 people is different than like two years ago when we had the first ever King strings and Marcus King met Billy strings four hours, like at, at the hotel room for a rehearsal four hours before load in six hours before their two hour set. <laughs> like, That's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah, and, like, I had, I had like, put all that together, and, like, I booked both of them before, but they'd never met each other, but obviously they knew of each other's music, and so they just kind of, credit to them, went with it and, like, trusted me and trusted the fact it would work, and... That's it, awesome. Like, it was so good, and then... So that's, like, a little different than, say, you know, the first time Rooster Walk 3 when we had Gifts from the String Dusters, which, like... The first festival, the entire budget for the entire festival, like staff, security, marketing, everything was $13,000. Um, wow. So you're not spending a lot on a headliner when that's the budget for the entire event. So I was buddies from back in college with Travis Book of the String Busters, the bass player. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he definitely, like... They wanted to play it. He was like, you know, it was kind of the brother-in-law discount. Uh, but that was that was one where it was like, that was the first band where folks were coming in from hour and a half, two hours away, who had no connection to Martinsville or the guys we were remembering who passed away. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be another very special moment. There have been a lot of them. Um, we had a bluegrass jam. The first year Billy Strings was there, so folks didn't really know who he was, but there was a guitar Mageddon that was Billy, the stage by Billy Strings, Gary Keel, John Stickley, Stefan Rimbell from France. Wow. Uh, John, a, a local cat, John Garris, who is not famous, but is like every bit player. Um, that was, that was another one that, you know, I could go on and on, but there are, uh, it's been it's been really neat and and really just really surprising and amazing and gratifying. It's not you know the first five years me and William we were not paid employees. Uh, we started it and we were thinking like when we created the poster for the first one. We had a debate on whether it was arrogant or cocky to promote it as the first annual rooster walk because we really had no idea for <laughs> the second one. 
It's confident, you know? You always go with the annual. Always go with the annual. But we wanted the annual. We wanted the people to know we were serious. We were going to be. Yeah. Uh, That's what's up. And, uh, and, you know, but we had no idea, quite honestly, it would ever turn into, you know, a full-time job for me and for William and, uh, and you know, raised $120,000 for the scholarship fund and put about $40,000 in the instrument fund and, um, and just made a whole bunch of, of friends who have become family over the years. That's awesome. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. So awesome. And how did you, uh, how did you get turned on to Billy Strings so early? Is that, you, you know... That's the first time I had ever seen him like, in Virginia was at Rooster Walk. Agreed, and, yeah. just, I like all types of music, but, you know, most of my close friends will tell you, I've, I've just been kind of a bluegrass, progressive bluegrass head since college. I ran mm-hmm. in, I went to school at UNC Chapel Hill and just so happened to be sat next to uh, Andy Thorne in his sophomore year in an entry-level folklore class. No way. You know who he was, and we started, like, hanging out and smoking bowls. Uh, before class, and then he invited me over for a party on a Friday night. It was like you went to UNC, yeah. And so mm-hmm. I went over to Andy's house, and I didn't even know he played music. But I went over there it was him on banjo, John Stickley on guitar, Bobby Britt on fiddle, who's the fiddle player for Town Mountain. Mm-hmm. All our age and all in school, um, and that just kind of turned me on to, to progressive bluegrass. And then through those guys. I met like Andy was in a college band in Colorado with that had John Stickley in it, uh, had uh, Travis Book from Spring Dusters, had Anders Beck from Green Sky. They were all in a band together when they were like twenty. So, wow, you all know how it is. You just like you meet, you get one good friend, and then you become friends with their friends. And so, so like it was honestly Paul Hoffman from Green Sky who uh, I was. I went to a Green Sky show. I went backstage afterwards to say what up to Anders and was chatting music with those guys. And Billy was from Michigan, Mm -hmm. as they're from Michigan. And Stickley had opened, Stickley Trio had opened for Green Sky a few months before. And I was talking to them about Stickley and and Paul kept going, yeah, he's, Stickley is amazing. Have you heard Billy Strings? <laughs> and, and he wasn't being like he wasn't being rude to like to Stickley. Yeah. He was just being like, "You're right about Stickley. Have you heard this guy?" Yeah, I had not. That's pretty accurate. I, yeah, on the drive home, like I was listening to Billy Strings, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, his uh, Billy Strings playing at the Southern here in Charlottesville is still probably one of my favorite concert memories of the past five years or so. Just you know, sold out with 300 people shoulder to shoulder in a room. Yep. With, with the energy they bring is, is kind of unreal. Billy's first year at Rooster Walk, he was playing Thursday night only, and he was supposed to be the middle band, and Eric Krasno's band was the headliner of Thursday. Mm-hmm. It was like all these crazy tornadoes and stuff in the southeast and the Midwest, like just crazy weather, high winds, and all these flights were getting um, shut down. And long story short, Krasno was supposed to have like a six-piece band, and only Krasno made it. What? <laughs> and uh, I wound up uh, asking, so Krasno had never heard of Billy, and, and Billy had never met Krasno, and Billy at this time is like age 20 or something. Yeah, yeah. And I talked to Billy first and see if he would be willing to back Krasno, like Billy and his, uh, Jared, his mandolin player, I believe it is, um, and a bass player. And then I get Krasno on the phone, he's like having a rental car trying to get to my Martinsville, where he's never been. And he's like, you have no idea what's going on. He's super, you know, super stressed out from being in airports for like 14 hours. And he's basically just like, dude, I mean, if you're telling me it'll work and like I'll get paid, like, let's go for it. And <laughs> and it was Krasno and Billy and like his band, Bluegrass Band, back in Eric Krasno. And it was killer. That's awesome. Who knew all the all the connections happened at Rooster Walk? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh man that's cool well it's very it's been, it's been pretty pretty amazing to kind of hear some of this backstory that i mean a lot of the most of the stuff i didn't know about the the earlier years and whatnot but i appreciate you appreciate you sharing sharing all the good stories and everything oh man my pleasure thank you all so much for having me and thank you for doing this and i'd love to uh, some other time maybe 
uh, pick your brain or whoever on the team. Like I'm, I'm, you know, interested in learning a little more about um, streaming. It's a, a show, and I know you guys do that as well. So, um, love to chat some sometime. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Feel free to reach yeah. out whenever. Thanks for cool. being here, Johnny. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah, it easy. Uh, we'll see you next year for Rooster Walk. All right, <laughs> sure. we're looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's what's up. Well, cool. Well, I think uh, I think we're unless unless anybody has has some more questions or comments or concerns or anything. Otherwise, I think we can, uh, we can wrap up and, and roll that eight toy cheddar uh, from the roof. <laughs> Something's going on here. With, um, Some crazy audio. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's aliens. We, Ryan, Ryan, we can't roll the, we can't roll the audio. Uh, uh, I was told it for by, you later. Then I was told by Carter that we can't, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe not now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll we'll post every everything that uh, we were supposed to air tonight that we weren't able to. We'll post it this week to the media. Ben, it's your dude. It's your phone. <laughs> what? It's your phone, Ben. Uh, <laughs> what was it sitting on, Ben? I, I, I don't know. know. <laughs> what was it on? I, was, I mean, I was on my computer, but I don't know why. It's not making any noise. It was the fan. <laughs> I was a fan. Sounded uh, like he was driving down the highway or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I guess all it's using a lot of bandwidth, I guess, or something like that. Yeah. Is that, that, is that the that's technical it. Term? That's it. That's <laughs> it. It's the bandwidth. <laughs> bandwidth. Uh, oh. Guys, I, guys, I took I took a in the allergy med before this and I think it's kind of mixing kind of weird with both the drinks. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, yeah I've used that one don't before. Don't put it. <laughs> yeah, well, loopy. Actually, my phone is about to die too, so. What's a good, a good time then, I'd say. A fantastic yeah. conclusion to the first KSC variety two hours. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Matt. Yep. We want to thank yeah. you. Thank you. We I thank want to do kisses, it again. Kisses. Uh, well, if we're stuck in. in the house for months, I'm I'm gonna come back and drink a different bottle of wine next time. Oh <laughs> yeah, a white. I'm a little loopy. It was the medication. <laughs> <laughs> we should get together and chat more often. It was fun. It was good. I roofed really myself good. before the broadcast. If I said anything wrong, it, that's my fault. Blame it on the roofie, yeah. I wanted it all to be stream of consciousness. <laughs> yeah, you guys, everyone stay safe. Thank you guys so much for for having me on. This is this is a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Let's right. hang out soon, in person right. next time. So we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Right, Sounds good. Take care, guys. Bye now. Bye now. Cool. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right.